Good morning. It's the start of a weekly vlog, but it's actually Tuesday. Um, I was still not feeling good yesterday, um, so I really didn't do much. I spent a lot of the day sleeping and just trying to feel better and resting, so no updates to the vlog didn't start it but today we are feeling better we are um getting ready to head into work um so i just wanted to start off the vlog um i don't have the rest of the books that i plan on reading this week um but since i did get sick um sunday and then Yesterday, I wasn't able to finish um, Rain Me In by Kayla Gross, which is what I was reading at the end of last week. So my first priority is to finish this one, which is a cowboy romance um, that I am 52% of the way through. So I'm on page 171. So that's that. Um, I do have about, like, ten minutes before I go into work, so I'm going to read for those ten minutes, and then I'll check in probably when I get out of work. Hey, it's Wednesday uh, evening. Uh, sorry, the lighting is weird. <laughs> I can't help it. Um... I am home from work. It's 6 p.m. Um, I am wanting to do an update on Rain Me In by Kayla Gross. I am 81% through. We're on page 268. And I am definitely enjoying this. Um, I'm not loving it, though. Um, I def it's definitely sitting around like a three, three and a half star rating, which is good. It means that I'm enjoying it. It's a good book. It's a good read. Um, but I'm not like eating it up. Like I'm not obsessed with it. Um, I think I mentioned in last week's vlog that we got to like 50% of the way through and... They still weren't, like, making any moves. Like, the relationship wasn't making any moves. And when I said that, I then read, like, two more pages. And we were like, the relationship is relationshiping. And that pacing has felt a little weird. Um, and the pace at which they're both making decisions and... Uh, that the relationship is moving based on some of the heavier things that are going on in their lives while still not like being willing to talk about those things has been interesting and I don't know how much I like believe that if that makes sense um I feel like I'll be able to more accurately talk about my feelings when I'm not exhausted um so maybe I'll have some more like coherent thoughts for you when I finish but my plan is to finish this tonight if I don't finish this tonight we have a problem and then we're gonna read Swift and Saddled by Layla Sage which I'm so excited for because Done and Dusted was is one of my favorites of 2024. I just know it. It's one of my favorites. So I'm really hoping that Swift and Saddled lives up to that done and dusted hype for me. Um, I do, I did also get a bookmark. That was exciting. It's like a cowboy. Oh, here it is. Ah! Cowboy Romance Book Club in my cowboy romance era. I don't know if you can see it, but it's so cute. So we're going to pair those two together. And yeah, so those are the plans. Um, I'm about to figure out something for dinner for me and the boy child because Charlotte is working late. Um, and then I have the next two days off. So I'm so excited. We also don't have many plans for the next two days other than 
to do some back to school shopping for the boy child because he starts next week and then we are going to go see twisters again tomorrow because the boy child really wanted to see it and i know i know i know i said in i think to the vlog two weeks ago that um i wasn't gonna see it again but he asked to go see it and i'm a sucker so we're going to see it again so that's my update i will check back in later probably when i finish this ah, i'm just throwing stuff today apparently uh when i finish this i'll check it so hey um it's the next day it's thursday like three in the afternoon i meant to check in earlier but i forgot to um i did finish rain me in by Kayla Gross. Um, I enjoyed this. I did end up giving it a three star rating. So I do, one thing that I do like is that there was no third act breakup. So if that's not something that you like in your romances, then you do not have to worry about this in this one. Um, the relationship was cute. I did end up believing in it. Um, though, um, the relationship wasn't my main issue with this book. My main issue was her, both of their refusal to talk to people. So both of them are dealing with grief in different ways, um, but neither of them are willing to talk to anybody about it. Um, our main girl, uh, Blake, won't even talk to her parents, let alone see a psychiatrist, even though um, her mother is really pushing for her to see a psychiatrist. She basically ran away from her whole entire life and refuses to even think about her brother that passed away. And her mother and father are obviously very concerned about how she's handling her grief, um, and she just straight up refuses to see anyone to talk about those really heavy feelings, which leaves her feeling like unable to move on or accept what happened, um, and she holds a lot of guilt and feeling of responsibility for her brother's death, which is unjustified, obviously, because it was an accident. And then we have our main guy who finds out that his father um, really didn't take care of the ranch and now they're at risk of losing it. And instead of communicating those things to his family so that they can get help, he holds on to all of that and continues to kind of put them at risk of losing the ranch because he can't figure out how he's going to resolve that and so the main conflicts in here was not between our romantic couple which i actually kind of enjoyed um but those outer forces um and having consequences from how they've been handling things which i did like um the end there was some weird like magic like speculative ghost stuff happening and uh that was hard for me because i don't believe in ghosts um so <laughs> i was kind of thrown for a loop uh i understand why it was included kind of but i also think it was unnecessary um so I don't know. Ultimately, I gave it a three star. It was fun. It was enjoyable. Um, I didn't hate it, which is even better. Um, and now I have gone ahead and started Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. And honestly, uh, 16 pages in and we are not disappointed so far. It's already exactly what I was expecting from Lila Sage and from the second book in the, um, what is it called? Um, 
uh, Rebel Blue Ranch series. So essentially we have Ada, she's our main girl, and she is an interior designer that West, or not West, Wes from Dun and Dusted, our main character from Dun and Dusted's brother, has hired to come help turn their ranch into kind of like a bed and breakfast. And she's there to do like the interior design work and make sure that everything's ready. And she shows up to um, Meadowlark, goes to a dive bar, and meets a hot cowboy who she makes out with and then runs away. Turns out that hot cowboy is Wes, he's her boss, and then things go from there. I'm so excited to keep reading it. Um, the boy child and I, we did errands today. Um, and we did back to school shopping because back to school starts next week. And then Charlotte is out of work in a few hours and we're going to go see Twisters, which I'm excited about. Even though I thought I would <laughs> not go see it again, I'm genuinely really excited. Um, I did also get myself a few things, which I will show you, but not right now because I've already moved to the bedroom and I don't have those things on me. So remind me and I'll show you later. Um, for now, I'm going to continue reading Swift and Saddled and just have a great time. So. Hey, so it's been a long time since I last updated you. I'm just gonna be totally honest. Um, it's like, almost 8 p.m. on Friday night, uh, but I've been busy. Not doing much that would be actually interesting to you, so that's why I haven't checked in. We did see Twisters again last night, which I loved. Um, I wasn't as scared the second time around because like, I knew everything that was going to happen, but the boy child also really loved it, so 10 out of 10 would highly recommend. Um, I don't know if I talked too much about the fact that I started Swift and Saddled, but I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I'm not surprised by this, but I am thrilled. And then I also have been listening to uh, Men Have Called Her Crazy by Anna Marie Tendler all week, like while I've been driving. Well, not all week, but a few times this week while I was driving. And then I've spent most of the day uh, continuing to listen to it i'm on page 201 um and i am enjoying it but i'm having a lot of interesting thoughts that i definitely want to sit with um i think it's interesting that anna marie tendler is very quick to call out the privilege that she sees men holding but she doesn't call out that same kind of privilege for herself she almost blows off the fact that for her whole life she has never had like a real job she's had on and off jobs she was a uh, shampoo girl she was a secretary at a hair salon then she did a few like she did a couple things for makeup both for weddings and for productions which she didn't really like and then she started making vintage lampshades which I love that her life has been privileged enough for her to be able to do that but that's really not what the majority of people are able to do um, and she doesn't seem to be able to recognize that. She does mention briefly in passing that she's been able to do this by relying on the men in her life. But then she constantly talks about her hatred of men. And I'm hoping that those conversations are kind of addressed um, as we move forward or as we finish up uh, the memoir. But from reviews that I've seen, I'm not too... I'm not too confident that's going to happen. The other thing that kind of irritates me is she is at this, the main, the main thing that the memoir navigate, like 
that ties all of the memoir together is that she's at a mental health hospital, a psychiatric hospital for a seven day um, I forget what it's called, the word is escaping me, but essentially for her to meet with a bunch of psychiatrists and uh, social workers, etc., um, to get a diagnosis of why she's so depressed. Um, and then she briefly touches on her traumatic instance with a therapist, but while she seems to be talking like she's taking it seriously, I don't feel like the actions that she's describing her having taken match the fact that she's taking it seriously. And that's also a little frustrating for me because inherently being able to go to one of these uh, psychi psychiatric hospitals is also a very privileged thing in a way um, that a lot of people don't get the chance to do. And that is also rubbing me in the wrong way a little bit and so I don't know if I'm the only one who's feeling this way I don't think I am based on the reviews that I'm seeing uh, but I, I have really high hopes for this um, and it's interesting sitting with these thoughts as I'm actually consuming what I was consuming I was expecting something different and while it's not Anna Marie Tendler's job to um, provide me with what I was expecting. Um, I do think the hypocritical nature of being able to call men on their privilegedness uh, and the way that they are so privileged while completely ignoring her amount, vast amount of privilege is also a little frustrating. So that's where I am. I'm probably gonna sit with it for a little bit. I'm hoping that Charlotte also reads it because I did get it for her for our anniversary so that we can talk about it because I think it would be a really interesting conversation between the two of us. But anyway, uh, while I've been listening to that, I have been working on some stuff on the computer and also doing a bunch of laundry. So, um, I'm about to probably turn on a, because I am at a, the start of a new chapter, so I am going to stop listening to that, and I am going to turn on probably one of the documentaries that I've been watching uh, while I fold clothes and wait for Charlotte to get home. Um, she's out in about two hours. Um, and then... I might try and get us to watch a couple episodes of Vampire Diaries because it's been days since we watched it and I miss it. I want to watch some more of it. Um, I was hoping to read more of Swift and Saddle today, but based on how the day is going, I don't think that's going to happen. But I did make quite a dent in Men Have Called Her Crazy. So I'm going to say it's been a good day for reading. Um, that being said, that's the update and I will try and check in more frequently over the next days before the vlog ends, so. But I have to know her. Lena, she's a dead ringer for Catherine. Her love for Catherine it wasn't real, Damon. Hey, um, I know I forgot to vlog yesterday, but I had a really bad day, so I just didn't vlog. I didn't have anything nice to say, so I just didn't say anything at all, and I know I just said that, but I do have not incredible things to say about <laughs> men have called her crazy, but I am going to go in the other room because my lighting is terrible in here, so one moment. Hey, I'm back. Um, this is kind of better. Um, I did finish Men Have Called Her Crazy by Anna Marie Tindler, and I'm glad that I don't write memoirs because I was incredibly disappointed by this book. Essentially, we have a woman in her late 30s who consistently centers men in her life and then takes no accountability for the emotions that she feels regarding the relationships that she has with men um hello i'm back this lighting is semi better i did finish men have called her crazy by anna marie tendler and i don't write memoirs which i think is a good thing in this case because it may work 
for other people but it did not work for me i went into this book um with one expectation and I was severely disappointed. Um, Anna Marie Tendler spends this whole book uh, refusing to take any kind of accountability for the things that have happened in her life. Um, not only that, but she refuses to do any real self-discovery. She doesn't have any self-awareness to the way that her behaviors have uh, caused her harm and uh, d discomfort in her relationship with men. Um, I feel like the fact that John Mulaney isn't talked about at all when she only got this book deal because of her very public m divorce, very public and messy divorce with John Mulaney, and that is what uh, it brought her to the hospital stay that this book revolves around is disingenuous. Um, wasn't expecting like a John Mulaney hate book but I do think the fact that there's no mention of him um, it's an elephant in the room especially when she talks about men uh, before her relationship with John Mulaney and then she talks about men afterwards but never mentions John Mulaney um, I think it's very sad that throughout this whole book we don't see her decentralizing men in her life so all of her decisions she makes everything is centered her life is centered around men and around her relationship with men and she does herself a disservice by not being willing to do the work to decenter men in her life um, and she also doesn't take again accountability for the fact that she's centering men in her life um, this just left a bad taste in my mouth. Also, the conversations around feminism and the patriarchy and misogyny is all very surface level. It leaves, it brings nothing new to the conversation that I haven't already been aware of. And I think most people, unless you, I think most people um, have the awareness already that misogyny is bad and that women suffer at the hands of men um, but this doesn't really do any digging into that concept any further than justifying her unjustifiable hate to men I'm not saying that Anna Marie Tendler hasn't been traumatized by men I'm not saying that her lack of trust in men or her hatred in men is not uh, understandable but I do think she takes it to a point where it's unhealthy and I don't like defending men and I don't like that I'm here defending men uh, right now in this clip. Um, she takes it too far and there's no accountability and no self-awareness. I know I keep saying that, but it's like so frustrating. This book was so frustrating to listen to and I'm so glad that it's over. So honestly, if you were thinking about picking this up, I would skip it. That's my advice. That's all I have to say, and I don't want to talk about it anymore. But on a better news, I'm loving Swift and Saddled. I am ah, 133 pages in, and the dynamic between Wes and Ada is so cute. We have Wes, he struggles with depression, and we have Ada, who definitely has some autistic traits, but she's not diagnosed, which I um, am really identifying with because I feel like my understanding of autism and my own personality, I feel like I have a lot of those traits, so I'm seeing myself in Ada and I'm really liking it. I'm really liking how uh, she just keeps referring to him as her sunshine, as sunshine, and it's so cute. I'm so obsessed. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'm just having so much fun. So glad that I can put that other book behind me and just continue with Swift and Saddled because I have a feeling this is gonna be another five-star read for Layla Sage, so that's my update for now um it's sunday so it's the last day of the vlog um and i don't know what we're doing for the rest of the day but i was hoping to finish with and saddled by the end of the vlog and i don't think it's gonna happen but at least we read one book so there's that anyway bye